Hey everybody, it's Nicholas with Jamsy Online. It is Monday morning and I'm standing here in the machine shop. We've got a few different projects we're working on. I'm doing some 351 Windsor heads. Uh, I'm working on some 302 Ford heads. And then we're also just, you know, kind of moving through some mis miscellaneous disassembly. Got some Subaru heads I gotta do. And I'm just gonna kind of show you guys what we've got going on in the shop this week. Be sure to give me your feedback on this video, but keep in mind that the content is going to be a lot more raw than some of the previous videos that I've posted. Dad started the week with a ton of disassembly and cleaning to get parts ready for machine work while I finished up cutting the seats on some 351 Windsor heads. These heads weren't terrible, but it just didn't make sense to not touch up the seats and make them perfect before going on to a fresh build. Here I'm double checking our installed spring heights after cutting the seats. If what we're working on is small enough, it'll be baked in our oven before being abrasively cleaned in our glass bead cabinet or steel shot machine. In the case of this large John Deere block, the size makes it so we can only clean it in our spray cabinet. What all is our plan on this one? Uh, I think it's just the clean and camberings, I hope. Got another set of Subaru heads that I'm doing, just like the last video I posted. So I've got, got them all taped up so I can glass bead them, get them clean, and then I'll replace the guides and cut the seats again. Turn on the dust collector and glass bead by hand. Once the block has been completely rinsed, Dad will blow it dry with compressed air. So here's kind of a comparison of the before versus the after. talking to. Alrighty, so I'm getting going surfacing the Subaru heads Tuesday morning. Alrighty, this video is probably going to be a little bit chaotic just because I'm still getting used to vlogging, getting used to the new GoPro, figuring out how far away to hold it and all that. Um, but I'm getting ready to put the seats in these uh, 302 heads. So I went ahead and, you know, did a little bit of measuring and picked out a seat that I think is going to work well for the intake as well as the exhaust. So I've got eight exhaust, eight intake seats, and we're going to get the counterboards cut over here on the Surty. All right, so I'm getting this leveled up here. Hopefully you guys can see that. One of the things that I've kind of talked about before is that having your pilot fit to the guide perfectly is really what you have to have to be able to cut the seats accurately. So just for example, I've got here an 8.72 millimeter pilot and an 8.71 millimeter pilot. I sized these to fit the 871 using our guide home and an 872, so just in inches, that's 3433. Three, three versus 3429. So we're four tenths of a thousandth different. And you can see here, the, the 3433 will not even start into these guides at all. But the 3429 that's four tenths smaller fits in perfectly. And I can feel there's no play in that and it just slides in. So there's, there's enough clearance that we're gonna be able to cut the seats. It's not gonna tie up but there's nothing extra. All right, now the exhaust counterboards are cut, so I'm gonna switch my tooling over to do the intake counterboards since we're doing intake seats on these as well. All the counterboards are cut. We've got a driver this set up. You put a pilot down in the guide to kind of guide it in. And I've got my driver set up. I'm gonna give it. And I like to blow air underneath it just at the last second. Just to make sure if there's any, you know, debris. Obviously it's already clean, but it's just kind of a peace of mind type of thing. Is. 
All right, so I got the first one cut. You're not gonna be able to see this, but I measured it. We're right at the 1.660 spring height that I want. So now I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna have to adjust it, but I'm gonna measure off the, the surface of the head to get the height of that valve, and I'm gonna cut the rest to match. I've got that roughly zeroed out. Seven or 28 to go. Should be it right there. All right, intake seats are cut. So now we can move on to the exhaust seats. All right, getting back on these, cutting the exhaust seats. So I've got this one to the finish uh, depth. This one I just started cutting a little bit till I saw the top angle, so I've probably got a few thousands to go here till I get to the same depth as this one. Um, got the intake all blended good. On the exhaust, I'm probably gonna go back in with another cutter and blend, because you can see we've got a lot of bottom angle here that could be opened up a little bit. doing some cleaning, getting some John Deere heads ready for me to do the valve jobs on. Got one of the John Deere's on the surfacer. The exhaust seats are just completely worn out. They got their money's worth out of this one. Uh, it's probably gonna be hard to tell. I'll try to zoom in on it, but the GoPro doesn't have a very, it doesn't focus up close. It has to be a little farther away, but you can feel the edge. They're just all curled up on the edge, completely cupped out, worn out. So they'll be getting new valves. As always, I always vacuum test every single valve while the head is still on the machine so that I can, you know, make another cut if I have to. And I try to keep all the chips vacuumed up and I actually gave the Surti a deep clean after this set before moving on to the John Deere's. Next, I finally had a chance to use my new TIG welder to try removing old valve seats that way. The welds don't look pretty at all, but the seats just fall right out after you get them that hot. So before, you've probably seen on my channel, we get a freeze plug and we press a freeze plug into the seat and then we get the MIG welder and we wire around, you know, and weld the freeze plug to it. And then we gotta go from the other side and, side and pop them back out. But with this, there's no, there's, you know, there's no reason to, I don't even gotta use filler wire. I just run the torch around it and they shrink enough to pop out. And there's no splatter that I gotta worry about cleaning up. So we've got a couple of rocker arm studs on this head that the tip of the valve wore out and the rocker laid over and took out the studs. So we talked with the customer, you know, gave them the option of replacing all of them or just replacing the three that are messed up and um, ended up deciding just to replace the three that are messed up. So three of them are gonna be screw-in studs and the rest will just be the same from the factory. Surfacing the manifold side on this John Deere. You can see that stud is, you know, square perpendicular to this, to the valve cover face. So I'm basically just leveling up off the valve cover face to make it simple, as opposed to trying to use, you know, a level like this off of one of the other studs. It's gonna be more accurate doing it this way. So this John Deere head that dad's working on surfacing, it's got really, really big ridges here where the sleeves had come loose in the block and we're basically moving up and down and slamming into the head. So this is a John Deere A block that I installed cylinder sleeves in to repair some significant rust damage. 
That process will be shown in a complete start to finish video dedicated to that job only, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. In this clip I'm removing a broken bolt from that block and I wanted to take this chance to let you know that I'm partnering with Michael Pro Tools to save you 10% off a set of these wrenches which feature an ergonomic 90 degree twist in the handle. This is a limited time offer so see the description of this video for more details. Thursday afternoon went pretty well, but Friday we didn't get quite as much done as we had wanted, but Dad went to work installing new guides and seats in the John Deere heads on the old TCM25, and then passed them off to me to finish the valve seats on the circuit. Here you see me setting one of my seat cutters, and I basically get it to what I think looks about right on the head, and then double check compared to my valve face and make any adjustments from there before I start cutting. Once I've cut a bit of the seat, you'll see me bluing the valve, and my previous video on this had some misconceptions in the comments. I'm not doing this to check the sealing surfaces for imperfections, it's purely to check the diameter of my valve seat and make adjustments accordingly. On these diesel heads, another check that we always make while we're cutting the seats is the valve recession or protrusion spec. My goal is to be within the specified range and preferably on the high side of the spec as opposed to pushing the low side. With that, Dad and I decided to call it a week and I think Dad and I both felt like we had a pretty good week in the shop. So thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.